All right, let's get this party started. So today we're doing uh, the second part of the introduction to Taylor polynomials, Taylor expansions. All right, so it goes like this. Uh, you can recall that uh, last time, or for a while now, we've been imagining that we can take some functions that may not look like polynomials and express them as polynomials, although very, very long. And you may recall that the key was all about finding the coefficients because the coefficients determine completely and uniquely what the function will do, what the function is. So when we had we came up with this. Uh, oh, by the way, I should mention that sometimes the polynomials are written around with just powers of x, and sometimes they may be shifted c units. In this case, they're powers of the quantity x minus c. You shouldn't let that bother you. We did it both ways last time. Uh, this is around zero. This is shifted uh, C units. It's not a big difference. Um, well, I'll tell more. Tell you more about the difference later. The point is sometimes some functions may be discontinuous at zero, so you have to shift them over or whatnot. And that's the short story. In any case, we came up with this amazing formula here. Uh, the amazing formula that describes all of the coefficients. Okay. It is a formula that describes the entire DNA for the function. And look how amazing this is. This says you can recover the entire DNA just from looking at the values of its derivative at one single point at C. Just check out all of its derivatives and you will get all of the coefficients and you will have uh, the complete DNA for the function. Fascinating stuff. And I'll remind you how that went. We took the function, we took the derivative, the second derivative, the third derivative, and so on and so forth. And then you play this interesting game here. You say to yourself, what if... Um, what if we make x equals c? So what if we evaluate this at c? What would happen here is that you'd have a naught plus, here you'd have c minus c, this would be 0. Here you have c minus c squared, that would be 0. In fact, everything else would be 0, 0, 0, 0. And so from here you get this good and amazing and useful information here that the first coefficient should just be the value of the function. Yeah, and then you go on and you do that to the first derivative. We took the first derivative by just looking at the f and bringing the two down, bringing the three down, subtracting one. First derivative of each of the terms gives you this. Now, what happens if we plug in c here? You get a one here, and the rest of the stuff vanishes because this becomes a zero, 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 zero plus a bunch of zeros, and you get that um, a one. Your first coefficient should just be f prime of c. Right, and then you do the same thing here, f double prime of c, you see everything else is going to cancel. The, the only thing that you're left with is the first item, 2, a2. And this forces you to see that a2 must be the second derivative evaluated at c divided by 2, or 2 factorial if you want to expose the pattern. You see the pattern coming up here. Again here, f triple prime of c. Look, everything else is going to cancel except for the first item, the one that has no x minus c expressions in it. That would be the first piece. That's the only one that stays. So this is equal to 3 times 2 times a3. This forces you to divide both sides by 3 times 2. It forces you into this corner. a3 must be equal to the third derivative evaluated at c divided by 3 factorial. And so on and so forth. I don't even have to write the rest of these. For f prime 4, the rest of it is going to cancel. Then you get that the fourth derivative at c is equal to 4 factorial times a4. This implies that a4 must be uh, the fourth derivative evaluated at c divided by 4 factorial and so on and so forth. Same thing for the fifth derivative and so that's why we get this amazing formula. That's how we got it last time. The formula for the nth coefficient is given by the nth derivative of f evaluated at the, end po at the point around which you're expanding divided by n factorial. Amazing stuff right here. This is the key to the DNA for all these functions. That's what we started last time, and what we want to do today is we want to continue on the same theme and expand that and become much, much more comfortable with it. I think last time uh, we only did one or two examples. We want to elaborate on that and do a whole bunch of examples today. Uh, we'll start off with this one, sine. We'll start off with sine. So the first thing I know is I'm going to need all the derivatives. So I've got myself my function, my first derivative, my second, my third, my fourth, fifth derivative. I went ahead and I computed them. 
Now this is going to help me figure out my, my coefficients. I know that a naught is just f of 0. Let's expand around 0. So, so this would give me sine of 0. So this would give me just 0. Is that easy or hard? That's super easy. a1. a1 I know is the first derivative f prime at 0. So, or if you want to be technical about it, over 1 factorial, that would be equal to uh, cosine of 0 divided by 1 factorial. And of course, that would be equal to 1. From here, I get a2. a2 is f double prime of 0 divided by 2 factorial. That would be negative sine of 0 over 2 factorial. That would be 0. From here, we get a3. a3 would be equal to f triple prime of 0 over 3 factorial. That would be negative cosine of 0 all over 3 factorial. Or said differently, negative 1 over 3 factorial. From this one we get a4, a4 is equal to the fourth derivative at 0 divided by 4 factorial. This gives me 0 over 4 factorial is equal to 0. This one is 5, we give a5, you're still awake, it would be um, 5 factorial uh, is equal to whatever, okay, cosine, that would be 1 over 5 factorial. Alright, so put, put all this together, so this means that the first polynomial approximation P9 is just 0. The first the degree 1 approximation would be 0 plus 1 times x. This one would be the P2 approximation would be 0 plus 1x plus 0x squared. P3 would be equal to uh, 0 plus um, 1x plus 0x squared minus uh, 1 over 3 factorial x to the third and so on and so forth. P4 is the same thing as P3 because you're adding 0 and then P5 is equal to, I'll clean it up here just so we can see the pattern it becomes x, this goes away, it becomes x minus 1 over 3 factorial x to the third plus 1 over 5 factorial x to the five and it's easy to see what the pattern is. Uh, this gets us to the following it gets us to say that the sine of x, the sine of x expansion is equal to uh, x minus x to the 3 over 3 factorial plus x to the 5 over 5 factorial minus x to the 7 over 7 factorial plus x to the 9 over 9 factorial and so on and so forth dot 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 that my friends is the bridge got a function there not a polynomial or is it a polynomial amazing stuff all right, that gets you going here. Uh, process streamlined. Um, how you could carry it on on a, on a daily basis. Come back for some more examples. We'll see you guys here next time. Peace.